are going to just dive into the word and if the Lord would help us for a few moments, I do believe he wants to encourage us as well as challenge us this morning. So I'm not going to apologize this morning uh, for trying to obey the Lord, but I am going to try to speak truth to us today. And uh, we can talk a lot about a lot of things, about how things need to change or we need this to be different or that to be different. But how many knows change doesn't just happen? It costs somebody something. And uh, so today we're going we're, we're gonna to pose a question, if the Lord would help us for a few moments today. And uh, that question is simply this, where are the courageous? Where are the courageous? Deuteronomy 31, beginning in verse number 1. I'm going to read together through verse number 8 this morning, if the Lord would help us today. It says, and Moses went and spake these words unto all of Israel. Notice he didn't just speak to one or two, but he spoke to everyone. He spoke to the words of all, un all unto Israel, and he said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord has said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before you, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee as the Lord has said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sion and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that he may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all of Israel, be strong and of a good courage. For thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doeth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither will he forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. And once again, I thank you for the precious people. Lord, I pray that you would take this vessel of clay for the next few moments and let it decrease and let your anointing rest upon us. Lord, I pray that we would preach in a manner where you would be exalted and lifted high. Lord, I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would be present in this room and minister to our hearts. And today, Lord, I pray that we would not just have a natural ear, but we would have a spiritual ear to hear in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. I'd like to share a story with you very quickly. The year is 1956. The place is India. It is the first time that this gentleman has ever set his foot on Indian soil. R. W. Shambach, some of the elders in this room will recognize the name. He's a great minister of the gospel. He has traveled the world and he is in heaven today. But on his first trip to India, he finds himself standing in front of 50,000 individuals. He stood and he preached for two hours with an interpreter, which means that he was standing in front of those people for nearly four hours. And as he ministered and he preached and he gave everything that he had and he made a benediction, nobody responded. Everyone just sat and stared. On this particular trip, he had walked through... India had saw the poverty, he had saw the lame, he had saw the sick, and he had saw the condition of so many and how dire it was. And he had recognized a few people in the crowd that evening. And after no one responding, he realized that the word of the Lord never goes forth without having an impact. And you have to be sensitive to 
knowing how to respond. So he called out three individuals and asked them to come to the front of the meeting area. One of them was blind and the other was deaf. And then the third was a lady that was very crippled. Upon them standing in the front and he began to pray for those three individuals, all of a sudden, every one of them received a miracle. They were all healed and delivered and set free. All of a sudden, 50,000 people that was not moving, that was not responding, begins to scream out in their language and begins to run to the front of the congregation. R.W. Schambach looks to his interpreter and simply says, what are they saying? And this is what they were saying. They was yelling, Jesus is alive. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is God. They ran and they surrendered their life. You may ask how and why. Can I tell you, R.W. Schambach made this statement. He said, God has called the church to demonstrate his power, not just talk about it. But I want to say to you this morning, it's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to position yourself for it to be demonstrated through your life. It's one thing for you and I to sit here and talk about the goodness of God, the grace of God, and that God can do anything amongst believers. It doesn't really require too much courage. But can I tell you, if you and I are going to be effective, we are going to have to be men and women of courage. And that's why I asked the question this morning, where are the courageous? To possess courage simply means this, to have the ability to do something that frightens you. Anybody ever been frightened? Absolutely. If you've lived any amount of time at all. However, to be one that is identified as courageous means this, that you're one that is not deterred by the danger or by the pain. If you wanted to bring it into one word, you could simply say this, it's a brave individual. There are many quotes throughout history concerning courage, and there's a few that I have stumbled across in my life that has made me pause and think, and I'd like to give you just a few of them this morning, and then I'll give you a few more here in a few moments, Lord willing. But there's one that really hit me in my spirit, and that is this, when I've read it, and it said, life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. I want that to settle in this morning. Now, I, I, I want to get real spiritual just for a moment, so please forgive me, but I'm going to take you to just a, a great scholar, John Wayne. He says, courage has been scared to death, but still saddling up anyway. Another I can give you is this. It is not the strength of the body that counts, but it is the strength of the spirit. A couple more, Nelson Mandela has simply said this, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but it is he who conquers that fear. One more this morning is simply this, courage is the most important of all virtues, because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. I believe that we are in an hour this morning in which we desperately need men and women to stand up in strength and choose to walk in courage today. Throughout history, we see those who willingly chose to walk courageously, and we see the impacts of their life. We could stand here this morning and talk for a long period of time about John Wesley, Jonathan Edwards, Billy Graham, John Whitecliffe, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, many others. But today, when we talk over the scope of history, from the battlefields to the platforms, due to those who chose to be courageous, you and I have been privileged to hear the bell of freedom ring throughout the ages. But for we, the people of God, we know this this morning. We know this very well, that the only true lasting freedom is not found in men, but it is found in the one, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Due to those who came before us and who courageously fought for and defended this great truth, we have been able to experience this freedom for ourselves, and we have given witness to it concerning the fact that our true redemption is still in Jesus and him alone. In short, it can be said that due to men and women who were willing to live courageous lives, we have received the greatest message known to men. Now the question is, what will we do with that message? Are we truly contending for this great truth? The little book of Jude, you will find that we are instructed to contend for the faith. To contend for something simply means that you stand in defense of it. You stand and you protect it. You fight for it and you make sure that you do everything in your realm to make sure that it continues to be preserved. Shortly after this message is delivered in Deuteronomy chapter number 31, we find that Moses is removed from the landscape and now we find that the people of Israel are in a state of disarray. They're in a time of grief. They're mourning. Their leader is absent. And now they're looking around and they say, what are we going to do? We find in Joshua chapter number one, shortly after Moses has passed away, we find that the word of the Lord comes to Joshua. And he simply says these words. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it come to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There, there shall not be any man able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. But it goes on just a little bit more. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper in whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou shalt that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. Now, Seems like we read that someplace else just a moment ago. Even though Joshua had received the same message before, but now we see that he had received it as a corporate body. And then we find that Joshua was singled out and was brought before the people. His hands was there in front of the people and Moses placed his hands upon him and he simply says, this man is going to be the one that leads you into the place of the promise of your fathers. But now we find that in Joshua chapter 1, after Moses is dead, the word of the Lord comes back to him again, and it tells him the exact same thing. And we find that on these different occasions, he is simply told that you are going to be one that is used to take them into a place of promise. But he was not told that it wasn't going to be without opposition. But you will find that when you really look in the, in between the lines of these passages of scripture, you will find that the Lord was really trying to get into his spirit that, listen, you're going to have to be courageous in order for the people of God to experience what I have for them. He was actually been told that where you're going, it's going to require you to be strong and it's going to require you to be very courageous. Meaning this, you're going to have to be brave because there's going to be something standing in front of you that is going to be bigger than you, that's going to sound more powerful than you, that's going to seem like it's impossible, but you have to trust in me. 
May I submit to you and I today that where we are going, we are going to have to be strong and we are going to have to be courageous. And I'm not talking about physical strength uh, in the natural, but I have to take us back to the place where the Bible says that we are not to lean to our own understanding, but we are to put our faith and trust in the Lord. And can I remind you also that our Bible tells us very clearly that it's not by might, that it is by the Spirit of God. And today I want us to understand that the God that we are serving is a God that does not change. And as he has been with others, he will be with us. But I have to be honest with you, there is such discontent in my spirit today uh, because when I see a world around us that is searching for somebody uh, to step up and lead them, uh, we find that everybody else is willing, uh, but the church is in such a slumber. uh, It's in such a place of apathy that we still have this false reality that we can come to the house of God on Sunday uh, and that's all that's required of us. But can I tell you, uh, I have been places and I've seen that the drug addict is still shooting up on Tuesday. Uh, I can see that the homeless is still present on Thursday. Uh, But we have removed ourselves from the landscape because uh, we think that's someone else's responsibility. Uh, Can I just be real and honest with you today uh, that that is just a cop out because we don't have any courage anymore. uh, Because we think uh, that if we stand up somebody going to single us out uh, and they're going to talk bad about us or we're going to be misunderstood. Can I tell you, Jesus was misunderstood and he didn't care. Uh, Paul was misunderstood and he didn't care. Uh, David was misunderstood and he didn't care. Uh, I can give you list after list after list uh, but we, the people of God, are the first to complain, oh, it's bad. Uh, Oh, it needs to be different. Uh, Can I tell you, it only becomes different uh, when a man or a woman becomes courageous and says, uh, I've had enough. So I'm asking the question this morning, uh, where is the courageous? Uh, And I tell you, the enemy says, well, uh, that's a little radical. You don't have to really do that. Just go give your offering. Uh, Just go to church, say your prayer before you go to bed. You're in a good place. Listen, uh, where much is given, much is required. Uh, Listen, it would be better for us never to have heard the gospel uh, than to sit in the house of God week after week, year after year, month after month, uh, and we know what the great commandment is. We know what the great commission is is, uh, but yet we choose to sit in apathy. God help me this morning. Uh, Listen, I love you, but I got to be honest with you. Uh, There's too much work to be done uh, for us just to sit around. Uh, Can I tell you somebody's mama, uh, somebody's baby, uh, some mama's going to be crying before the end of the day because their baby has stepped into eternity lost without God. Uh, Can I tell you, uh, but if somebody was courageous, uh, they could have reached and pulled them from the flames of the fire uh, and said, God uh, is still the answer I got to remind us the enemy is really good at what he does Uh, he is the father of lies but let me tell let me expose him today there is still a power that is above and beyond him We have to understand as God has been with others, he will be with us. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear thou not, uh, for I am with thee. If he is with you, why in the world do you have to walk around in fear? Isaiah 43, 1 through 3 also says this, uh, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by, thy, by, by my name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. If that's the case, why in the world do we sit around in a state of fear? Why is it that we walk around in a state uh, where we're so anxious and so uptight uh, that we can't even function in our daily lives? Uh, Why is it that we're so anxious uh, that instead of uh, 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 placing uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the generation that God gave us, uh, we are birthing them and developing them uh, in a state of fear, and by the time they're five years old, they can't walk into another room because they're too anxious uh, about what might be around the corner. 
God help us. Uh, that is the spirit of the demonic uh, trying to take a generation before it can ever begin to live. Uh, you got to begin to proclaim over your children, over your grandchildren. Uh, you are a mighty man of valor. Uh, you are a mighty woman of God. Uh, listen, I come to make war on the devil today. I'm not mad at anybody, uh, but I'm here to tell you there's a world that needs Jesus, uh, and we need some courageous men and women that will stand up uh, and say, not now, not on my watch. Uh, while there is breath in my body, uh, I will stand, uh, and I will defend, uh, and I will fight for this thing. As he has been for those, so will he be for us. Jesus himself spoke the following. He says, fear not them which kill the body. In Matthew chapter number 10. But he said, you should be aware and be fearful of the one that is able to kill the soul. He says, listen, you don't even know what your value is. When you start reading through chapter 10, verse 28 through 31, he says, listen, you are of great worth in the sight of God. He said, you're of great worth. He said, I, I, I will protect them that are mine. He doesn't just go before us, but he goes with us. David simply said at the end of Psalms 23, and, and we've preached it multiple times through the years, he said, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. What he's really saying is this, don't matter if I look to the right or the left, my God is there. So if he is always there, why in the world do I have to be afraid? Uh, why in the world am I so timid uh, that I won't share this glorious message of Jesus uh, to a lost and dying world? Please hear me. Which brings us to what I believe is the most important message for the believer in this hour. Please hear me. Brother Jade mentioned and ministered on this psalm on Wednesday night, Ephesians chapter 6. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. I'm not asking you to be strong in anything else other than be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We are to put on the whole armor of God. You know, a courageous person will dress for battle. A courageous person will go face a giant with just a sling and a, fire and a few stones in his bag. Please hear me today. We're in a place this morning where there has to be an awakening to the reality of the times in which we live. We are commissioned to take this message to the masses and in doing so, we will be faced with opposition, but you cannot allow the unknown to keep you from your assignment. The psalmist wrote the following in Psalms 27 and 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Well, they just don't want to hear it. I'm going to tell you something. That's the biggest lie of the enemy. They may not respond the way that you want them to, but can I tell you, his word does not return void. And when you put the word out there in a loving manner, I'm not saying you beat everybody in the head with a Bible every time you see them, but I'm telling you, I go back to the story, is that, that maybe they don't want to hear what we have to say because they don't see any power in our walk. Notice R.W. Shambach preached for two hours and, and he said all the right things. He probably, he probably hollered and carried on like I am this morning. But yet they all stood there and sat there and sat in the trees and nobody moved. But the moment they saw it in operation, it changed everything. We was walking through Cincinnati last night. There was a little eight-year-old autistic boy that went missing in the Cincinnati Zoo. We stopped what we were doing and walked and looked and... Help try to help find this kid for over an hour last night. Praise the Lord, they found him, but he had made it outside of the zoo. But as I was walking around, I was really disturbed in my spirit. I was disturbed multiple reasons why. Number one, because the little boy was missing, uh, nonverbal, like dark places. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking through bushes and everything else, trying to, trying to do what we could. And it's like, what do you do? How do you do? You're overwhelmed. But then I began to have this anger rise up inside of me. And I said, God... We're so off base. Maybe I'm just becoming really radical. I don't know. But I remember the generations before us. I said, Lord, if you could lead those generations, why in the world are you not leading us? Why is the fact that the Holy Spirit is not so alive in us that we can't say, God, you tell me to turn here and turn there where I could know where that boy is? Lord, that's the level that I want to be. 
I found myself walking and praying with my, with my family as we were walking through and looking. Can I tell you, it isn't okay for us just to walk. Listen, we got to be somebody have crazy faith again. There's got to be a, there's got to be a spirit of courageousness that comes uh, upon the people of God again. Oh, you're, you're, that's just silly. No, I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit is given to us, not so that we can give tongues and interpretation. That's a part of it. Not so that we can dance and shout and say, oh, we had such a great service. The preacher didn't get to preach. Some of you like that this morning. But can I tell you, at the same time, it's not just about that stuff, but it's about the Holy Spirit has come so he can show you that what was and is and is to come. I need somebody to be courageous. I'll I'll go on. Y'all ain't liking it this morning too much. I'm sorry. I love you. The psalmist wrote, and he simply said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? But that's not all he wrote. In Psalms 56, 3 and 4, he said this, what time I am afraid. He wasn't saying he was superhuman, but he said, in those seasons that I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I'm going to tell you something. If you live any length of time, you, there are going to be times you're going to be fearful. There's going to be something happen. It's going to cause fear. It's going to cause panic. Can I tell you? Unexpected events will happen. It's like, oh, my Lord, what do we do? How do we do? But in those moments, the psalmist said, I will trust in thee. And God, I will praise his word. God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Church, we're in a season of intense spiritual warfare but we do not have to be afraid for our God will not fail you say is it really that important for us to be men and women of courage I I believe it is because when you start looking at history anybody remember the name William Wilberforce if not you should read about him He saw people from Africa been taken as slaves and he knew he had to do something. This is what he said. He said, it is inconceivable that we could be bored in a world with so much wrong to tackle. Think about it. Well, I'm just bored. Well, you need a little bit more Jesus. Come see me. I'll let you not be bored. Harriet Tubman. Anybody remember her? This is what she said. You have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to change the world. What about President Abraham Lincoln? He said, be sure you put your feet in the right place and then stand firm. I wonder where your feet is today. Are we standing on the side of right Or are we just standing hoping that the next wind doesn't move us like everything? I'm going to tell you something. The church has to stand. I'm not saying we stand in religion, but I'm telling you we stand in the principles of the word of the Lord. Not everything that's under the umbrella of church is church. But there's nothing more than a false church that's leading thousands upon thousands to a place called hell. While we sit because we don't want to rock the boat. I need somebody to be courageous this morning. Susan Anthony, she, she was a spitfire in her day. She said, we ladies ought to have a voice just like men. She said, I want to cast a ballot just like everybody else. They tried everything in the world to make her be quiet, but notice what she said. She said this, failure is impossible. She was courageous. She spent her life telling people that everyone should be treated, could, should be treated equally. These are just a couple of people that stood in a place of courage. Can I tell you, Rosa Parks, she wasn't in the spotlight. She wasn't on the platform preaching, but she just decided not to give up her seat on her bus. Notice what she said. I believe we have, I believe we're here on the planet Earth to live, to show up, and to do what we can to make this world a better place. I wish the church would just decide to show up. Come back next week, it'll be better. Martin Luther King Jr. simply said this, and a lot of people said, oh, he said, I have a dream. Yeah, he said that, but that's not all he said. He said, the time is always right to do what is right. I'm going to tell you something, the time is right for us to do what is right. 
what is right, Jesus Christ is still right. I could go on and on this morning, but I got to bring us back to a place where you realize that there's a couple of things that we need to remember, and that is this, that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. But there's four things that we're fighting against today. And these four things are not going to go away. But there is an intensity in this hour. And I want to give them to you very quickly. If you were to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, you would find them in verse number 12 of that passage of scripture and it says this for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but we wrestle against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places those four things is what you're facing and can i tell you those four things want to take your children they want to take your children's children they want to take your mind uh, they want to take your peace uh, but can i tell you no weapon formed against you can prosper when you are covered by the blood of jesus but when you and I understand who we are, then we also have to understand what our assignment is. That same thing that we have freely received is we have to freely give to others. And can I tell you, the Great Commission has not changed. Uh, we are to go into our Jerusalem, our Judea, our Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, can I tell you, Matthew 28 is not removed uh, in the 21st century. Uh, but we are to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. I'm going to tell you something It's going to take courage. You can't do it if you're half in and half out. Lord, help me. I don't, I'll just. We've gotten so soft. We've gotten so intoxicated that the sipping saints are now drunken saints. And then we wonder why we're not getting anything done. Please hear me. The world is in trouble. And not just the world is in trouble, but our nation is in trouble. You can bury your head in the sand and you can live in this false reality and say, man, if my man gets elected, everything's going to turn around and the next four years are going to be wonderful. I'm going to tell you something. You need to get that out of your spirit right now. The next four years are going to become more dark than the last four years because we are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're dealing with rulers of darkness of this world. We're dealing with principalities and we're dealing with powers of evil. But I'm going to tell you something. There can be a light in the midst of darkness, uh, but only if somebody will once again become courageous. I understand difference in policies and things can change certain things and give us a reprieve. But I'm going to tell you something. Our answer is not man. Our answer is not government. Uh, our answer is for somebody to lay between a porch and an altar and say, God forgive me for not being courageous uh, and help me to stand up and fight for my generation. Uh, listen, uh, if you would get a little bit more passionate about the things of God and a little less passionate about politics, uh, we would change the world. Uh, and we wouldn't just touch our nation, uh, but we would touch the nations of the world once again. Uh, but listen, uh, I know what it is. Listen, just a few days ago, I was driving down a road uh, that had dirt piles uh, just so I didn't get shot by snipers. Can I tell you, it may change your life a little bit, uh, but I wasn't fearful uh, because I know that my God was with me. Uh, I want you to understand today, uh, we are in a place where reality is this. Darkness is abounding. Uh, but when there's a man, uh, if there would be a Bonhoeffer in this day, uh, if there would be some others that would rise up in this day, uh, we could change the course uh, that we're currently on. But we have to become courageous. But the question is, where are the courageous. I'm hurrying. I'm closing. Romans chapter 8. Let me help you this morning. Romans 8, 15 through 18. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Let me remind you of who you are this morning. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. What would happen get this there's some wonderful fathers and there's some wonderful mothers in this room there's some wonderful grandfathers and grandmothers in this room one of the things that I always remember and puts a smile on my face is sister house she told me this I couldn't tell you how many times over the years she would simply tell me she would say she said now when it comes to my children pastor 
Now, when it comes to my children, what she was simply saying is this, I'll be sweet and lovely until you touch one of mine. Because she was a mama, still a mama, still wants what's best for her kids. Why do I say that? It's because if we're the children of God and we are how we are, how much more protective is he of us than we are of them? So why do you have to be afraid? Especially if God has deposited something. Here's one of the biggest struggles that I found over the last 20 years in ministry, and that is this. Everybody will say, they will acknowledge, well, I feel like the Lord has placed this in me or has placed this call on me or they've given me this gift, but then they let the enemy come in and just paralyze them because they begin to believe a lie. Well, I'm not qualified. I'm not good enough. It's a, and the list just goes on and on and on. So they set with this gift, with this call, and it sets and it lies dormant. And what happens is they never operate out of courage. Here's a real freeing thought for you. Can I be transparent with you as I bring this to an end? When you come to the place where you realize this, there's always somebody that can do it better, and that's okay. Celebrate that. And at the same time, I know that I'm not always going to be everybody's cup of tea. That frees you. There'll be those that say, man, I, 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 I like your style of preaching. Then I know there's other style. He's just not my cup of tea. That's fine. Maybe you need decaf. That's fine. <laughs> but I kind of like caffeine myself. I'm just kidding. But listen, it's okay. Because we're not doing what we do. To be pleasing to people. We do what we're doing to be pleasing to him. Now, I believe in having a circle. I believe in having accountability. I believe in spiritual headship and all of those things. And I try to practice all of that. I have elderly men that, I, that can openly speak into my life. And I support that. And I, I, I think you have to have that. But at the same time, I will only stand before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he is either going to say one of two things. Depart from me, I never knew you. Or, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know who's going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? It's not the complainer. Not the one that sat in silence. But the one that was courageous enough and sometimes maybe even foolish enough to say, God, I'm just going to trust you because none of it makes sense. This walk of faith is just that. It's a walk of faith. Now, I'm not telling you to be stupid in your thinking and your planning. But I am saying this, that if there's this little thing inside of you that you know that God's called you to, and you're not operating in it, shame on you. Because while we choose to be selfish and say at a better time or a more convenient time, there is men and women that's dying lost because we just don't want to be courageous. But if we are courageous men and women, here's what I firmly believe, and this is what the church in the Revelation heard I have set before you an open door. Now, you don't always know what's on the other side of that door, but you have to be courageous. I wonder this morning, how many open doors have we walked past because of a lack of courage? And I wonder how many individuals has been setting in those doors that we could have reached because we just wanted to just go through the motions. I'm not being mean this morning. Please don't interpret it as I am. I'm challenging us to a place where we understand that as much as we all love this, and we're supposed to be here to be edified and equipped, this is just where it begins. But this week we need to be out there. 
in the midst of the Christmas hustle and bustle and season that we find ourselves in where people are open to hear this name Jesus more so than any other time of the year, we need to be courageous. I'm not 120 years old. And the Lord didn't tell me I couldn't cross this Jordan. I still think I got some muddy water to go through. But I know this. After carrying three grandbabies all weekend, and not jumping out of bed, but rolling out of bed and moaning and doing so this morning, and feeling all of those aches and pains that never were there before 10 years ago, I know that I have more days behind me than in front of me. And I look around and I see that 90% of the people that I'm doing ministry with is closer to the exit than I am. And I see generation coming in and coming out nonchalantly. I have to ask the question, where's the courageous? As they come to the piano this morning, if I tell you what happened. I didn't forget where I started this morning in Deuteronomy 31. Moses stands and says, listen, things are getting ready to change. It's going to look different than it's ever looked. I'm not going to be standing out in front of you anymore. Because God says, I can't go. But the Lord wants you to know that he's going to go with you. He's going to go before you. He's going to remove every obstacle out of your way. He's going to give you the promise of your father's. But he didn't stop there, but then he tapped the next generation and he said, Joshua, you're, you're going to have to make a decision today. If you're 35 and younger in this room this morning, could I impose on you just to stand for a moment right where you are? If you're 35 and younger. This is what he did. He had Joshua stand in front of all the congregation of Israel and he simply said this. He said, Joshua, y'all are Joshua this morning. You are going to cause this people to inherit the promise of their fathers but you are going to have to be strong and you're going to have to be of good courage throughout every great move of God throughout the history of our nation young generation has played a, ro a vital role in it and this last day harvest is not different those of you that are standing, are, are sitting, listen. We're transitioning from swinging that sword in the manner that we always have to climbing up onto the mountain and lifting our hands in intercession and been a covering for the Joshua generation that's standing in this room. But this generation is going to be very instrumental in leading the people into the promise. So to those of you that are standing, can I tell you, I'm not asking you to come go with me to a pizza party or to play a basketball game. We'll do that. And I'll still act like it don't hurt, but when I go home, Debbie will hear about it. But that's not what I'm asking you to be part of today. I'm asking you to really consider and to pray about being men and women of courage. To lead your generation as well as the church in general into this next move of God that God has for it.
Because I have to remind you today that we are not going to limp out of here into glory. But he is coming back for a bride without a spot, without a blemish that is ordained and, and beautified in a manner like we have never known. But it's going to take courage. So today, when he pulled Joshua, he said, listen, I want all of you to know this, that God's going to put something on Joshua and he's going to lead them. He's going to lead you into that place of promise. It's a different type of anointing. This generation ain't going to do it like we always done it. It's not going to look like it's always looked, not going to sound like it's always sounded. But can I tell you, there is a prophetic anointing where they can lead us into the promise that Joel wrote about and talked about and what Peter preached about. We've been in the last days for some time, but at the same time, we're getting into that final moments and we're in a place where there's a ladder and the form of the rain getting ready to fall. And we need some people to be courageous. You may be seated this morning. So one more time, I ask this question. Like those that came before us, will we stand fast and stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free? Maybe you're here and you would say, but, but preacher, don't you see all the trouble? Don't you see all the opposition? I do. But if you were to read chapter 4 in 2 Corinthians, Paul's writing to the church at Corinth. This is what he said. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. He said we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're even persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're even cast down, but we're not destroyed. Can I tell you today, I've read the back of the book and I know who wins. And it isn't him, but it's us. If we'll stand in a place of courage this morning. Stand, y'all can stand. I like audience participation. We're done. You just flow with it. When it's up here, you see all kinds of things. Where are the courageous? I believe this this morning, that there's people in this room Many of you are doing some amazing things, but there's so much more that God's calling us to. We're closing out a year and 2024 is a brand new slate, brand new opportunity. But we need people to be courageous. Don't be afraid. I could give you a list of men and women in the Bible throughout history that stood and said, if it costs me everything, I'll stand. I can give you story after story of missionaries that's been in all kinds of places, even throughout our nation, paid the great price. In Ecuador, some years ago, a young man and four of his friends trying to reach an unreached people group. A few people had tried to go in before, and it, it was a barbarous people. Every person that had tried to go in, they had took their life. They had a little pilot, a little plane, they'd fly in and they dropped some supplies and they did it a few times and this tribe started coming out and getting some of the things. So Steve and his four friends, they 
They landed, spent the night on the riverbank, and some of the ladies of the tribe came out and greeted them a little bit, but then they thinking, okay, we're getting somewhere, but just to find out that just a few hours later, the men of that tribe came out and killed all five of them. Could have walked away, but those men's wives, they simply said, just because our husbands is gone, that is not a reason for us to quit. God still called us and we're going to finish the task. They was courageous. Long story made short, Steve's sister and his wife ended up going in and living amongst these people. They received them. Steve's son ended up been very instrumental, still actively working there. Ended up being raised, was adopted basically by the man that killed his father. Repented that they, that tribe began to follow Jesus. Countless people will be in heaven because somebody chose to be courageous in the darkest of dark of situations. The man that slaughtered Steve's father, elderly man up in his 80s now. I haven't heard the last couple years may have already graduated to heaven, but this is what he said. He said, there'll be a day that because of you and your family bringing Jesus, that the man that I slaughtered is a man that I'll be able to dance for all eternity with in heaven. I know that's hard for us to get our mind back around, but can I tell you, the only reason that the farmers was able to take a combine and pull into these cornfields this year and get a harvest was because somebody planted a seed and that seed went in the ground and it died. God help us to die again so that a harvest can stand in our field. So that we won't be satisfied with rituals and religious activity but where we'll burn with such passion that we have to go to our Jerusalem and to the ends of the world this morning I wonder if there's anybody in this room that would say God help me be courageous don't care if you've been saved 50 years five minutes or not giving your heart to the Lord yet She'd say, man, I want to serve him. I want to follow him. I want to fulfill all that he has for me. I want to make a difference. If that's you this morning under the sound of our voice before we leave today, I want to pray with you. Maybe you're somebody that's working and you're diligently following the things of God, but you say, you know what? I need more courage. I, I want to go beyond what we're doing now. No matter where you're at, on this scope this morning if you're in this room I'm going to ask you to come stand in front of this building with me I want to pray over you, pray with you, pray for you today if you'd say God help me to be courageous I want to be the man that you've called me to be I want to be the woman that you've called me to be I want to be the minister that you've called me to be I want to be the ambassador that you've called me to be is there one this morning I want you to come right now anybody Say, God, help me to be an ambassador. Help me to be courageous this morning. God bless you, son. So good to see you again this morning. I did my part this morning, so you're not coming forward for me. I feel like I've emptied myself this morning. But I'm going to tell you something today. And this is not a rebuke. You can 
don't, so don't take it as that. But a message such as this preached in other parts of the world, the whole place would have come to the front of the building without being pulled or begged because they understand the task that's before them. This ideal that we're just going to skate on to heaven, you're going to have to get rid of that in your mindset because I'm going to tell you something, there's some tough days ahead. And I don't say that to frighten you, but you're going to have to stand and you're going to have to face some things. You're going to have to fight through some things. And it's not for the faint of heart this morning, but it's for the courageous. Do you realize nobody else in Israel's army celebrated the victory of Goliath but just a teenage boy? Nobody else had the testimony that Daniel had coming out of a lion's den because he still went and prayed. Everybody else was fearful. It was just three that had the testimony of a fiery furnace because everybody else was just bowing. But what about the courageous this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, I love you this morning. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people today. Lord, I thank you for those that have responded and stood in the front of this building right now that are simply saying, Lord, help me to be courageous. Help me, Lord, to be the man of God, the woman of God that you've called me to be. Lord, I pray that no matter what they may face in the days ahead, Lord, I don't know what you're calling them to. I don't know what their role is. All I know is that we are all members of the body of Christ, fitly joined together, and you are the head of that body. So today, Lord, I pray supernatural strength, supernatural blessing. Let every need be met. Let every provision be provided. Lord, I know that some of them are being called to different places and different things in the world. Not all of them have been called to platform ministry. I understand that. But Lord, you're giving them favor in business and corporations and organizations. And Father, I pray that that would be anointed in such a manner, Lord, that it would begin to change the atmosphere of the places that you're assigning them. But Lord, I do believe that there's those in this room that's going to be called to the nations of the world. And Lord, I know that's a struggle. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts to that. But Lord, today I'm praying that you would give courage that you'd give direction, that you would give guidance. Let there not be a spirit of fear upon them. But Lord, today I pray, Lord, I pray that there would just be an overwhelmingness of your Holy Spirit come to them even now, that they would know, that they would sense, that they would feel that right now, God, you're doing something in my life. Maybe it's simply just getting to a place where they feel comfortable of sharing their faith. Lord, we understand it's just one step at a time for all of us. But Lord, today I'm praying for there to just be a boldness come about your people. Let them not be afraid of what might be said or how it might be received. But Lord, all I pray is that you would help us all to share our faith with love and compassion. But let us not bring it in a form of judgment, but Lord, let us operate let us operate in grace and mercy and Lord I pray that you would help us love unconditionally that we would walk boldly and Lord I pray that your will would be done in every life and Lord I pray that there would be no hindrance to what you're calling them into today so today Lord I thank you I thank you for the courageous man, the courageous woman. Lord, I pray over this body of people. Lord, I pray for those that are joining us by way of internet today. Lord, as this goes through the lens of these cameras and into the airways, Lord, I pray that your word would not return void. Lord, I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit would minister to the hearts and lives right where they are. Help them to be courageous. Help them to be filled with courage. Help them to be brave in this hour that we find ourselves in. So, Lord, I pray that you would be exalted and lifted high in all that we do. Lord, I pray you bring us back tonight, 6 o'clock, ready to worship, ready to learn, ready to grow together. In Jesus' name.
And the church says, Amen. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I hope this message blessed you. And if you could, please check the description below for all of our links to our social medias. Um, and as always, check our page. You'll see all of our previous messages there. Uh, I hope this message again blessed you and uh, reached you where you're at. And thanks for watching. See you soon.